Drew, what got you into Subarus? Rally and Gran Turismo, but mostly Rally. Hmm. What about you? I think I would say the same. Gran Turismo. Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious. <laughs> but, you know, Gran Turismo is always the beginning, and especially finding the rally cars. Yeah. GD, Debra X with the iconic livery, even the Evos. You know, rallying has been such a big part of motorsports history. Yeah, and I mean, that's a lot of like motorsports history going back. Um, it was intertwined with rally and, and um, road rallies uh, and um, circuit racing were not like that far apart. There's drivers that did both. Mm -hmm. um, and Subaru specifically, of course, rally was their thing. And it still is a little bit, but um, for, for m many Subaru enthusiasts, that is the hook that brought them in. Um, but it's always kind of been like this goal that's not really that attainable for a lot of Subaru people. Um, just because like mm -hmm. that commitment to drive your car on dirt is is different. Um yeah. but um anyway, our our next guest uh is taking that commitment. Yes, he, he is. He's committed to uh turning his daily driver 2015 STI. Um, um I'm actually not I sure. Think, yeah. Um <laughs> into a uh so it is a it is a rally cross car he competes mm -hmm. in rally cross and does very well um but he's making that transition to stage rally this year so yep and yeah he's he's built the car up from scratch himself uh you know and it's it's been a journey and we're glad to welcome him today on the podcast yeah so check it out Hey guys, it's Jordan Pepper here. Um, just want to let you know for all your latest up-to-date tech news, follow Apex Files. Guys, welcome back to Apex Files podcast presented by Race Comp Engineering. I'm Lawrence. I'm Andrew. And today we got Kevin joining us. Uh, where are you calling in from, Kevin? I, I'm in uh, China, Michigan, up in the thumb. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. Um, How's it going? So uh, you're a you're a rally guy. You're our first rally uh, nice. driver on our on our show. Uh, mm -hmm. You do some rally costs. You're you're transitioning into stage rally um, eventually. You're yep. building your car for that. Um, you've done have you done an event yet this year? Uh, I've done one rally cross event, but uh, our region because it's so like rainy and muddy right now, they kind of just are limiting what we can do. So we only did one event, but it was on pavement just dirty pavement so yeah uh, gotcha. not really a rally cross event. stage yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. So, um and it's and so it was a it was a rally cross so uh, a little bit different than than autocross right in terms of like how uh the timing works right yeah it's really it's just the timing is the biggest different it's just cumulative timing instead of your best glory run per se yeah so, okay so you yeah, have so to be like consistent and 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 uh choose your moments to to attack right uh throughout the day yeah it ends up being a situation where uh it it just pays to be the safe driver kind of and just mm -hmm. you don't get the cone to keep it all between the lines and it usually pays off at the end of the day unless you know sometimes you have one person that just really fast that just also misses or never hits cones but yeah. <laughs> usually you end up doing more harm over driving and hitting cones and whatnot. So, right. Cool. So I, I want to backtrack a little bit. Have you always been into rallying or was there any other motorsports that caught your eye beforehand? Uh, so I, like growing up, I was always, I, I liked watching the X games when they had rally cross and whatnot. And, you know, that kind of was what got me interested in going sideways, you know, on dirt and, uh, at the time, obviously, I was younger. I couldn't afford a car. Uh, so, you know, I was mostly into, like, dirt biking and stuff like that just to get used to going, you know, getting close to the edge and, you know, getting that racer mentality. And then once I got out of college, I could finally afford to have a, a car to get into. And uh, when I went to college, it was up in Houghton, Michigan, where they used to have uh, Lake Superior Performance Rally, uh, one of the classic rallies in the U S and so I, that's kind of what really got me into stage rally more. And once I started watching that, I knew that was what I wanted to get into. So it's just, you know, when I, that's what I, why I ended up buying the WRX and the goal from there was like, okay, in handful of years, I want to get into that, but we're just going to slowly work towards it. 
So that's yeah. obvious. I, I, I mean, you and that progress, you know, that you've taken or taking right now of, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been following you for a while. I remember because I haven't read 2015 STI. <laughs> so, you know, and, and then when I saw, I remember when Varus came out with, um, Varus Engineering came out with the hood, the, um, the hood events. Yep. <laughs> and they had them for the STI. They had a specific model for the Derex and STI. But then I saw them post something and I was like, that looks good, but different. That's not the one from the STI. And they ended up being ones, I think, from the S550 Mustang. Yep. And I think you, you were one of the first ones that 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 put them on. Yeah, I think I think I only knew three or two people that had it before me. So <laughs> and one of them worked was like right there with them. So he was always their test fitter. That's all. Yeah, because I remember seeing it, I was like, man, that looks good. And then like ever since then, you've been following your, your progress. And it's to say at least it's been a crazy progress, especially in the past year, right? Yeah, because you're you're like you're building it yourself for the most part, right? I mean, you're the the building a rally car is not an easy thing. I mean, there's there's a lot of it's kind of a commitment. I mean, well, first cutting out the hood for the hood vents is one thing, but also like, you know, switching to rally brakes is also a commitment. And uh, you're putting the cage in now too. So each step is like really like pushing you down that path and, and, and transforming the car. Yeah. It's been crazy. I mean, there's a lot of things where, you know, you, you can just look up answers online and then you get to a point where you're just past that cliff and you're like, yeah. I don't even know where I'm going to ask about this. Or you know, <laughs> you're like trying to like figure out solutions. And, you know, that's like a lot of it right now is, you know, maybe at the beginning of the state or process, I, you know, you do something one way. Let's say a lot of my electrical that I did on the car wasn't that great at the beginning because it was still a daily driver. You only had the weekend to get the whole thing done. It had to be ready on Monday morning. And now it's like going back. It's like, oh, I can actually make this the correct way and make it look a little bit better. And you know, so there's a lot of like little things like that. And it actually is part of it has sucked a little bit because, you know, I had set it up a lot for, you know, essentially being a glorified street or, you know, car in the fun or car Joe was just fun on the street, but also could do rally cross. Mm -hmm. And I'm having to take some of those parts off to make it legal for rally or stage rally, which is kind of sucked because, you know, even like, mm -hmm. The main one was that the rear end of the car just never mm. felt that planted, uh, uh -huh. especially running 205 wide tires. It's always there's been nothing there. And then I don't have, I have no sway bars on it. So it's just, oh, it's always been a little bit loose at the rear end. And it actually got a lot better when I put the, the Varus engineering uh, diffuser on it. And then I had to start taking it off and I was like, oh God, this is, it's going to suck on like the random one day a month you drive to work with the car. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other like um, suffering inserts or anything else for the rear at that time? Uh, say that again. Yeah. Did you have any other like subframe insert bushings to help stabilize the rear at the time or was this? Uh... Uh, I have not. And I still haven't. Uh, hmm. There's like, I don't, a lot of people end up going with the direction, especially on stage rally cars of just keeping stock bushings and mounts and just mm -hmm. to let it absorb some of the impacts that they're going on. Yeah. So, you know, you, mm -hmm. you look at it and you want to like, you want to put, you know, stiffer bushings in everywhere and make the ride a little bit tighter, but then it ends up, a lot of people say it ends up hurting you in stage rally and whatnot. Yeah. It's, it's like complete opposite mindset of, of road racing, right? It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, and that's like, you know, I want it to be decent on the road still. And like, you know, but then it's like, you also, there's like a little bit of give and, give and take on it. So especially with a lot of those, the bushings and stuff, like I, I, when I upgraded the uh, rear lower control arms, I put in like nice SPL parts ones and I felt kind of guilty, like putting that in there. I'm like, oh God, is this, am I just going to wreck these things immediately? <laughs> but so far, it's all held up together pretty nicely. I've I actually haven't broken anything on the suspension, which I'm surprised by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, no, I mean you're you're right. Like, I think a lot of people forget like the STI Group N um, <clears throat> bushings and all that. All of that was developed for rally, and mm -hmm. uh, it's all you know hardened rubber, but still rubber. Um, and spiracles. There are some like STI group and spiracles too, but that's like a little bit more rare. Um, I think 
I think you're the like for for rally cross and stage rally. There's like they're they're not exactly the same. And and like, have you noticed? Uh, you talk about like pulling some parts off for stage rally. Um, like, do you anticipate making some some big changes for that transition, or you kind of see where your car lands um, and and kind of go with it and see see what you need to do as you go? Yeah, I think it's going to probably be mostly keeping it how it is. And once you get through the first event, trying to take it apart and look and see what's what's really wearing down. Because, I mean, I don't want to be buying, you know, the like aftermarket, let's say, lower control arms. We'll go back to that. You know, I don't want to be buying, you know, $600 lower control arms every time you break it. But at the same time, I don't necessarily trust the OEM ones a lot. Right, right. You know, just mm -hmm. the stamp steel that doesn't look like it's going to yep. last very long. But, you know, so there's a little bit of trying to figure out, like pick your battles a little bit and see which parts are actually going to hold up and which ones, you know, if it's going to hold up for a while, I don't mind having the nicer, you know, it's more expensive part on it, but. Right, it, right. Yeah, it's like the thing is, you know, without, with being like a, I'll call myself a privateer in the sense that I don't have, you know, sponsorship <laughs> or anything, but so it's all out of your own pocket, you know, you got to really decide what's worth it and what, what actually, cause you know, I, there's a ton of solutions you can do to make it work. Just mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's in the budget. <laughs> how, yeah. how long is that solution going to last for? Right. Well, and that's the other <laughs> yeah. thing too. Like um, how, when it breaks, how does it break? Is it like a catastrophic pieces everywhere mm -hmm. type of thing? Or is it like kind of bent a little, but you can make it back to, to the service um, like for, for, uh, you know, time trial, if you get that one good lap in, you're good. But for yep. rally cross, you got to make it through three days of rough, rough stages. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little bit of a different calculation there. It's like, oh, I bent the wheel. That's fine. Keep going. Yep. Um, or like, my wheel exploded. <laughs> <laughs> one of those is worse. Yeah. <laughs> um. Do you, do you ha or have you looked at like the STI catalog at all? You know, the rally parts, you know, for, for your car. Um. Like, and he's like, uh, you know, like uh, say the, the the race top mounts that the rally car uses or any other like spherical bushings or anything else yeah so i've looked at i've looked at a handful of those parts it's it's not super easy to find them a lot for the va it, it seems like it's a lot of that stuff is more common with the older generations and the it's like every generation is becoming less and less um yeah but there's there is still some parts uh that i can get and I've looked into them. I just, I don't know. I haven't really, obviously, like with the suspension setup I have right now, I haven't needed it. And it's kind of going to be one of those things that I think I address as I need it. You know, if I notice the stock part has broken a couple of times, I might start looking for a better solution. Have you have you been to any of the, um, the rally driving schools um, or um, does your region kind of have like a, a system or like setup where you've had some instructors or or do you instruct? I know you've got a lot of experience rally crossing. Um, have you explored any of those? So I've, I've wanted to, but uh, cause I know that there's both the team O'Neill uh, that I've been pretty close to, but I've never actually been to it. And then uh, the dirt fish. And unfortunately both of them are pretty far away from Michigan. We're kind of like, right. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like exactly in the middle. <laughs> like one of those things that I think I'm going to, uh, probably the first couple of rallies, it'll probably be more of a teaching yourself, you know, just bring the car home. It, especially like with, with the first couple events, uh, especially for ARA, you have to have, you know, I'm going to be classified as a rookie. So my turbo restrictor is going to actually be even more restrictive than a normal one. So they, they do that to slow you down a little bit and you need to get so many points to get out of, out of the rookie class. So, you know, especially at the beginning, it makes sense just to doesn't really care about your time. Just get the experience, finish both days and bring it home. And, you know, maybe in, you know, a year or two, then you're out of the rookie class and you can actually have full fun with it. <laughs> right. And yeah. really start competing af after that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your long, I, well, maybe not long-term goal, but like two or three year plan for the, for the car? Like, do you want to, by next year or the year after, do you want to make as many events as possible and, and uh, see where you land or um, just kind of stick to the, like your region or, or what are you, what are you, what are you aiming for? So I'm 
looking for like so this year i'm probably only gonna i'm aiming for one rally event which is lspr um which will be like mid-october and then from there uh i'm probably only going to be doing i think i've set the budget for two events per year uh just because they do get kind of pricey you know even if you don't wreck your car uh just between like these and all that stuff um so i'm probably just going to aim at two a year uh and then the one of them will always be lspr just because it's what i consider to be my home event and then the the second event i'm probably just going to float between different regional events you know like i'd like to do snow drift because it's also in michigan but i the the i have never had a ton of luck with my car in the snow uh for racing just because of the size and the weight um but i would like to explore other events in the area like i've you know i've always wanted to go to southern ohio forest rally uh and then even though this one's not in my uh the midwest region or central region i think it is for ara i'd like to go to the new north yeah, uh new england forest rally uh just because it's a gorgeous gorgeous place to have to race at so yeah so i think i'm just going to probably just float between events for my second event every year and just kind of you know that'll be the one where i just get to explore rally in different areas and you know just as a because you know i entered all this as a fan of rally before you know wanting to actually compete in it uh, so, you know, I like to see the areas and see the roads as well. So, you know, I kind of want to let it take me to different courses and, you know, just check out different rallies, you know, especially like I haven't never attended any of them on the West Coast. So it'd be cool to see them over there, too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, one of the things about rally, you can be a fan of it and, you know, make your way to stage rally. And then all of a sudden you're you're racing with the the top drivers from from Subaru for, for um from Vermont Sports Car. Um and the rumor that there might be a WRC event in I think Chattanooga. Um, yep. yep. That's that's the rumor. I don't know if it's like finalized or anything like that, but conceivably you could just be on the same in the same race as them, which yeah. is uh kind of a cool thing about rally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is crazy. Like, you know, that's one of the things I was always thinking about was, you know, you're going to be here and like all the drivers end up knowing each other because there's not that many rally drivers. And, you know, hey, you're just here like, you know, you say, you know, walk in the same area as like, you know, as Ken Block uh, and like, you know, people like that. And it's just crazy to think that you're in like that same area. You're you're driving the same roads as these people. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're part of that that group now, right? That's, yeah. that's your part. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, you've, you've mostly stuck with rally cross and, and you've done pretty darn well at that. I, I mean, I, every time I check your Instagram, it's like, I did a, I had an okay day. I got first by 10 seconds or something <laughs> like that. And it's like, um, have you, have you, um, like, have you gone to the nationals or anything like that? Or, um, your region I know was, is pretty competitive just because I mean, it's, that's what Michigan does. <laughs> uh, um, so I haven't been to the national uh, championship for uh, rally cross yet. I wanted to, uh, so like the let so 2020 I had a, a big year. That was like the first real year I did rally cross, uh, where I probably did I don't know over like ten events or something like that. And unfortunately, that year the national championship was the same day as LSPR, where I was going to go up. I already had plans to go up there for it. And so I was like, oh, I'll just go the next year. And then like the next, it just seems like every year, like I've had less and less time or like the, you know, the schedule has been just a little bit goofy. So like the next year I only got to four events and, you know, at that point I was, I wasn't that confident in the, my seat time that year to go to the uh, nationals. And then last year I didn't make it to any event. So like the, I'm, I'm hoping to make it to it at some point. Cause I, you know, I would, I think it would be fun, but unfortunately it also uh moves around the country a little bit so like i think 2020 it was i think it was in cincinnati or something it was like it was actually fairly close to me it was only a couple hours away and then you know there's the ones where i think it was out west one year i think it's like kansas or something like that this year and so i don't know it's it's one of those things i want to go to eventually but it's going to kind of, kind of fall to the wayside a little bit with stage rally taking precedent over it. And especially because they're usually competing for the same time of the year. 
looking for you for you to be there. So when like when for for prepping for stage rather, you know, we you know, we know motorsports like it's it's a demanding activity, you know, and people who aren't in it or don't know, like don't realize it's it's physical. Um, but I think rallying takes it to another level just because you know you're you're on rough surfaces the whole time. You know, it's not like a glass moves track like code or anything else like that. Um, are you doing anything like more uh physically to prepare for stage rally? Uh well, other than trying to make sure you're in the right weight to actually fit in your seat, not not too much, <laughs> you know. It, it's fair. It's you know, you it is kind of a, a workout to, let's say, you know, you're on stage, you get a flat, you got to change the tire. Rally tires mm. are pretty dang heavy, you know, mm. and they're not exactly, especially with the uh, roll cage forming a little jungle gym in the car. It's not really easy to get yeah. to anything. You know, you just yeah. now you have a seat that's worthless. And, you know, like the other day, I, I, cause I usually drive my car to, let's say rally cross events. So I got to jam mm. all my tires in there. And I'm oh, trying wow, to like yeah. you know, try to get four tires out of that car. And I'm like, I'm like, someone's walking by and all they see is two feet hanging out the back of the trunk because I'm trying to get <laughs> two tires off of the top of the fuel tank. But <laughs> so yeah, it's mostly just you know being able to move stuff and whatnot. It's mm-hmm. not, I wouldn't say it's a ton of physical effort. You know, it's not like it's not going to be as strenuous as let's say track racing or whatever, where, you know, you're under a lot more G's or whatnot. Cause rally cars, yeah. mm-hmm. they're, they're really not, they're going fast, but they're not fast for, you know, if you're compared to a car on pavement, you know, it's, right. it's fast changes, compared, yeah. like, so mm-hmm. it's not really like your, on your body's under a ton of stress under it or for it. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not like I'm doing that much different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. As, as someone who has like mild back problems, sometimes I see those jumps like, holy hell, that, that just, I feel like my back is just hurting watching them skip across that lake or, you know, that five feet jump. <laughs> yeah. That'll, that'll be like once I like figure out the suspension, like, okay, I'll, you know, try to like figure out how much this is going to hurt my back or like how many times can you jump it before it does something? Cause you know, I've, I've done like, so rally cross, you're not supposed to do jumps, but I've we've every now and then you have a event where they maybe tweak the course just a little bit and oh hey, you accidentally jumped twice. You know, we're gonna change that a little bit. We're gonna make that even a little bit different. And like I've never had like any issues with with that yet, but mm-hmm. you know, obviously rally jumps will be a whole different animal. So yeah, we'll, I guess that's gonna be one of them we see because there's not really a place to practice jumping your car you know <laughs> <laughs> you know so you've been you've been using for rally cross you've been using um the gt works bilstein um relatively simple like fixed perch um strut and shock um i think with like king springs maybe king um, race springs so like an extra yeah inch and a half roughly Mm-hmm. okay and you've been using that for like five years or something like that right yeah, and it's I- it's doing pretty well right yeah, I'm. Yeah, I have been blown away by how durable it is. Mostly, uh, you know, I, for like if you're talking about like how, like the valving and everything on shocks are. I don't think it's super noticeable on rally cross, just because like the speed you're at, and you know, like a lot of things play a bigger role. Uh, but the thing that's always struck me is just the the durability of it, because you know you hear people bending shocks and you know blowing them out quickly there's been a couple uh a couple events where you're coming up to a, a spot and you just like you you feels like your you know your fillings are knocked free in your teeth and you're like oh god i don't want to look at how bad the suspension is going to be when i you know you're gonna get back to the pit or something and see your your car's two inches lower on the front corner or something and you know i've, I've been pleasantly surprised like every time i can't believe that they're still just holding together and that's been the 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 crazy part about it <laughs> and you're you're on, are you running stock oem top mounts as well yes yep okay yeah, i just the yeah. only other thing i have on it is one inch top hat spacers just to get me a little bit extra ground clearance That's, and, the, and, and 
And so you've never you just saw those same only amounts, right? You never swapped them out. Like nope. It's been the same one to five years. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's like that's one of the things that I wanted to like started to look into a little bit more is because I, I I have one other guy that is at pretty much every rally cross that I go to and he's in my class. And I know he's been tweaking with uh the caster the caster a little bit. And he's he was saying that it helped him get a little better turn in on his car. So I, it's one of those things like I want to start to look into uh, just because mine is kind of a bus trying to turn it at times. So yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but, he, he has like a Hawkeye. So it's a little bit, just a little bit smaller than mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Caster, Caster's nice, especially for rally. Um, but um, yeah, that, that reliability is, uh, I mean, we talk about bending and breaking stuff and like, being able to count on something's pretty, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, rally, even rally cross, is supposed to be like a little bit, not quite as insane as stage rally, but it does get kind of rutted. Right. And oh, get, yeah. gets a yes. little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, at I the mean, end of the day after hundred runs. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people's, you know, like their steering knuckle, like completely come off the, the shock and everything <laughs> I've seen, you know, we've seen bumpers ripped off at just about every single event from ground clearance issues. And, you know, some people blow out oil pans. So there's a lot of things do go wrong on it. So I, that's why I've always typically been like, oh, I just raise it a little bit just so I don't damage anything underneath it and go from there. I'll take the little hit in time to, you know, lose a little bit of speed, but whatever. <laughs> I'd rather but just you, you get, Yeah, you get the experience, you get the seat time, you make sure the car is good to go and ready for the next next event, right? It's, yeah. it's all on. Yep. I think you get I think you get a lot more seat time in rally cross than you do autocross too is like the comparison. Um so that's that's cool. Maybe yeah, depending on the region, I think. Yeah, because I, I I don't I don't have a full uh I don't want to say I'm well versed in autocross because I've only done one, but it was I actually did one autocross in that car with basically the same setup uh before I ever did rally cross and it was at an actual track where they just add a couple cones to it to yeah. actually yeah like a track right. cross type of thing yep yep mm -hmm. and and that was that was actually pretty fun but i mean i got a lot of seat time on that uh surprisingly the car didn't finish last in class despite being lifted two and a half inches <laughs> <laughs> but it, that that one was weird because you know i'm sitting there lining up and the car next to me is a also a, a va sti with 600 horse at the wheels and i'm like okay well I'm a, a little outclassed here, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Two different goals. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so probably, well, if, we, if we go off the off the pavement a little bit, I'll do a little bit better. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> pass them on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Um, so and and you're you're using actual like gravel rally tires now. I think you're I saw you're using Hoosier rally tires now. Yeah. How much how much of a difference do those make? So most people use like snow tires for rally cross um for a variety of reasons but how big is that difference from like the usual either all-terrain or snow tire to going to a grab like an actual gravel tire so like the it takes like a lot of surfaces um both like the a lot of times the winter tire will actually still be kind of faster for rally cross uh just because a lot of times we're doing you know you'll just start on a surface that's like a grass field and you start digging into it a little bit and when it's that soft the gravel tire just never gets enough heat to do anything um but like let's say our region does a lot of uh oval tracks where they're you know hard clay and no matter how many runs you do in that day you're not going to dig through it at all and in those sort of events i've actually excelled pretty well with the the gravel tires uh I, I only run like a medium compound just because I only want it. Oh, I want it to run the entire year. I don't want to have to buy multiples. So, but that's usually been like my bread and butter with that car has been on those harder packed ones where I can actually use the gravel tires. Um, but then, you know, when you get into the softer ones, sometimes I'll still use the gravel tire. I just might be giving up a little bit of time, but I think it ends up being worth it because Kind of like how we said earlier, we don't, it, you have all your times matter. So you can't have any sort of hiccup or anything go wrong. And probably half the times I've used the 
snow tires on dirt, I've had a DB. So, and it's like, you know, luckily I've, I had one of them happen where it only, you know, it's probably a hundred feet away from the finish line, but you know, it's not always that nice. So yeah, you know, I've never once DB did a gravel tire and I don't think you ever will in auto or at least in red cross, you will maybe <laughs> elsewhere or other times, but it's just that little bit of security is really what does it for me is knowing that you're not going to ever DB. You can just, in especially with your driving style changes just a little bit because you can lean on it a little bit more on the on the sidewall and you know that's so much stiffer it's gonna hold you it's not gonna actually give up at some point and it yeah it doesn't you know it's not flexing so it's not feeling different halfway through the corner and you can mm-hmm. actually carry it a little bit so those end up being the more fun days because you end up just doing more drifts and stuff like that and just getting to the yeah. corner and like oh, i'm not i'm gonna barely touch the br- the brakes or whatnot if at all and just throw it sideways and let that be your brakes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've I've got I've done an event with my BRZ um, on on Bridgestone Blizzax, which I apparently are one of the worst snow tires to use <laughs> for for rally. Um, and just being really worried that I was going to DB them, which didn't happen because I'm so slow, but. Um, that like just knowing that they're not going to DB is I can just see that making such a huge difference outside of, of how fast or slow they are. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like, if I do commit to rally cross, I just, I think I need another set of wheels. <laughs> yeah. That, that's like the problem is that you just end up with all these sets of wheels and, you know, cause I, I'm at like, I think four sets for my car and I'm like, at this point, I'm, I don't want to buy another set of wheels, but you know, I don't want to be like changing what tires are mounted to them all the time. So I'm going to leave one on there until that tire is dead and then just replace it again. So I'm like, okay, I got to like sell some sort of wheels and, you know, get another set of these and whatnot. So especially because like I'm, they make like, uh, I know, I don't remember the name of the company off the top of my head right now, uh, or Alpha, Alpha Tires makes like kind of like oh, a yeah, thing yeah. where it's, it's like a, not quite as stiff as a rally tire, but it has, you know, kind of the same blocks as a rally tire will. And those are like ones that I kind of want to explore a little bit. Cause like I said earlier, my car doesn't really do very well with, it's a little bit muddy and they make pretty phenomenal mud tires. So that's something like I want to look into, but I don't want to have a fifth set of tires now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do, do you have any uh, favorite rally drivers, you know, rally heroes or, you know, people you've been following for a while? Anyone that's like inspired you to, to pursue the, the sport? Uh, well, like growing up, because uh, I always, my family was always into Fords. So I mm-hmm. obviously loved when Ken Block switched over to drive Fords. And that was like, that was right about when I started watching or when they started doing the X Games uh, rally cross. So that like those kind of met together at kind of the right time. So that was one of the uh, ones that kind of influenced me to like get into this stuff and be interested in it. Um, but like, I never actually met Ken at a, at a rally until last year at LSPR. Um, but other than that, like I always liked Pastrana just because, you know, he's another guy driving a Subaru that's down to earth and whatnot. And, you know, like, I think he always had that, uh, you know, showed like what, what it meant to be like a rally driver, you know, they're not like these inaccessible drivers, like in formula one or like any other form or where they like, they don't really want to talk to you. And, you know, if you were there, talking to Strada, he wants to talk to you for half hour, if he could. <laughs> <laughs> they, they both look like they're having so much fun. And that's right. Like, that's right. That, that yeah. makes it like, well, I want to do that too. Mm-hmm. I mean, like formula one, I mean, amazing, but like they're, they're so focused because they, they have to be, yeah um, it's just like it's a different zone for them and like that it's it's just different seeing a rally driver they're just out like hanging out and having fun yeah yeah i met travis and ken at sema in like 2007 or something like that and i was and they, yeah like you said like travis just wants to talk to you and like they're super down to earth and friendly and i was kind of an idiot like <laughs> i said I, I recognized travis first and then like me and travis are talking and I, then I realized Ken's was with Travis. They're just, he's just <laughs> awkwardly standing there next to Travis and me while I just talked to Travis for like 
a couple of minutes and he's just like twiddling his thumbs. And then, hey, I'm better than this guy. I want to <laughs> and then eventually I was like, well, hey, Ken, I got to go. <laughs> so I didn't actually talk to Ken other than that. And he was like, totally goes, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, but I've, I've also liked uh, probably more that now that I'm like actually getting closer to being into the sport, I'm starting mm -hmm. to form like a lot more friendships with other people that are already in the stage rally community. And I think that's where it changes a little bit because you're now you're like walking around park expose and you're not going straight to the Subaru rally team USA cars that are, you know, mm -hmm. a couple hundred thousand dollar cars. And you're looking at <laughs> instead of people that have, you know, like the smaller teams, cause they don't really talk to anybody, you know, like the fans mm -hmm. usually are there to look at them. Uh, right. their cars, right. they, they might be sitting there with the, 1980s Volkswagen, you know, that's not super interesting, but you go walk up and talk to those people and they really want to talk because they just, they're just car, car people like us. So they're not being paid to be there. You know, they're, everything is out of their own pocket. It's just because they like the sport, they like to drive. And I think that's where you kind of end up changing a little bit is because you realize like, that's what I'm going to be, so, you know? So it's like, I want to, I want to like look at these people and like, you know, you can look at the, the fancy rally cars and look at how they handle things. But, you know, I don't have the money to drop on like, you know, a Motec right now or something. So I'm going to look at how you guys are doing this like a little bit differently and like within a budget. And that's what I find myself doing now is going to like, Hey, can I just look at your car? Like, how did you guys do this? And like, look at it, how they set up and they're, everyone's happy to show you. They just want to look, they just want to show off their car and, you know, help someone else out. <laughs> Yeah, there's no real like secrets behind no. these. Like they just want to get out there, right? right. And that, I think that's something like there's still a fine line between the grassroots guys and then the pro guys like Vermont Sports Cars who have a big trailer and you know a 20 people team that are there, you know, have every aspect taken care of. You know, but for like us grassroots guys, like you know, budget is priority. It's it's a main thing, right? You know, like as yeah. much as we love this, you know, we 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 are limited by this. Um so you know and especially for you like it seems like you do a lot of your own work yourself like uh, yeah, most, a lot yeah. of the tech stuff right so um you know how much if you were to guess how much money would you guess you save doing your own work versus paying someone else like a shop to to to, to prep this car to where it is now oh man i don't even know probably <laughs> that's a good thing that's a good thing you don't want to think about but that I that's think it. it's probably like in the five digits overall everything you know between yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like doing all this like let's say just changing a clutch out on these isn't super easy but i've done right, it multiple right. times you know things like that I mean, really the only the only times i haven't done work on my car is i don't usually do like paint work on it i'll just let someone else do that just because it's usually fairly reasonable anyways um, I had a buddy that did the roll cage for me. So I, you know, just cause I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm good at welding. So I'll let someone that actually knows. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, welding is a whole different art in itself, right? Yeah. <laughs> but like, other than that, I think I took it to the, I've only, my car's only been at the dealership one time, which was just to figure out the brake setup because I didn't have enough time because I had to be at work. <laughs> but like, other than that, like everything else is just, all right, I'm going to figure it out, you know, YouTube will do something here and I'll figure it out this time and just do the whole thing yourself. So, so how, how much, like, does that give you that extra bit of confidence going into stage rally? Cause knowing like, you know, if something were to go wrong, it's you and the co-driver that have to fix a car on the stage, right. Or, or, or try to meditate it to get it back to, to the, to the pit, you know? So does that, you know, working on your car all the time, like knowing the ins and out, Little little stuff here and there that you know, yeah, you, only you would know, or someone else that works on a car always knows. Like, do you feel better going into stage rally having this experience? One hundred percent, yes. Um, like that was one of the things that kind of like just taking one step back here is, uh, like when I was about to, and I, when I knew I was going to go into stage rally, usually people tell you it's cheaper just to buy a car that's already done versus build your own because you know you're at let's say 5,000 for the cage alone. And then, you know, all these other random things just to get it up to uh, safety levels, you know, it's just, you're going to spend more than you'd ever be just to buy a car. But I always said like, you know, I'd rather know the car, you know, I've, let's say I've driven my car since I bought it in 2016. So coming up on seven years with it now, 
you know, I know like all the ins and outs of it. If, you know, if something starts to go wrong, I kind of have an idea of where it already is coming from. And then you said about the, you know, I've done all the work on it. I, I usually know just about where every bolt is for almost everything on it. So like, you know, like, let's say uh, if I need a hand on something, like my brother was giving me a hand on something the other day and I'm like, Hey, that's going to be a 14 mil socket. And it's going to be there. You need to use the extension to get to it. And he goes, how the hell do you know? I'm like, I just, I've worked on that part so many times that I know exactly where it's yeah. all at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. It's, it's like me, it's, you know, it's, it's, him, it's, it's him and it's my car. Yeah, you know, like, like I, you know, I can have a suspension, full suspension drop, like 20 minutes, you know, just, yep. <laughs> it's just, you know, you do it so much, you know, things and outs, and yeah, it's, it, it, it pays off, you know, it, it will pay off, you know. Yes, you definitely. <laughs> So um, you're planning on an event this year. Was it Lake Superior this year yep. that you're yep. aiming for? Mm -hmm. Well, that's like October-ish. Yeah, it's like usually like, I think it's October 13th and 14th this year. It's usually like half, right right in the middle, whatever, whatever okay. Friday, Saturday lines up. Yeah. I have never been to a stage rally. I would love to go sometime. So maybe, I don't know when. That's maybe, very maybe, far away. We should make, maybe make our way up for that one. Yeah. That one's, uh, I always think that LSPR, uh, not that I'm trying to just sell everybody on it because it's my favorite, but it's just one of those weird ones where, you know, you have like Southern Ohio is always in June. It's always going to be roughly nice. Uh, you know, same with New England Forest Rally. Well, there's like one year where I'm at LSPR as a fan and the first, the Friday was like 70 degrees or so. Saturday was snowing. So it's like, <laughs> you know, like a lot of, a lot of the competitors had to withdraw because they didn't bring any tires to handle snow. So it's no, like, one of those where like anything can happen type of event. Yeah. So that's, that's great. Well, it's beautiful then, right? Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Well, uh, it's been really great to talk to you. Yeah. Glad to get a rally guy on the show. Um, it's one of, one of my first Subaru loves. Um, yeah. So very glad to talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, yeah. It's, you know, especially just yeah, having the, the grassroots guys, you know, we've had some pro drivers and, you know, you know, other people affiliated with shops, but, you know, having people that guys like us that spend their own time and money to make these events and, you know, take time off from their family and loved ones and stuff to, to do what they love. And, you know, whether it's driving rally cross or road racing, you know, it's, we're all in the same boat. So, yeah. you know, appreciate the time taking, you know, taking, Taking the time to join us for today. Yeah. Do you want to plug your Instagram or uh, any supporters? Uh, yeah. Just uh, on all the socials, I'm just Heritage Livery. It's pretty simple. Cool. I think it's only on Instagram and Reddit right now, but probably going to make yeah. an official page for the rally team at some point. Yeah. Here. yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you plan on a new livery for the car for for going to stage rally, or are you going to keep the same thing? I'm probably going to keep it for now. I think I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to ever powder coat the wheels again. So everything's always going to run it. And like, I always told myself, cause like the whole reason, uh, probably no one knows why I had that name for my handle, but it was always yeah. because like my favorite car growing up was the 2006 Ford GT in the Gulf oil package. And it was always called the heritage delivery package. Um, and I growing, when I got this car, I was dead set on getting, uh, getting it wrapped or painted in Gulf oil. I was you know, like when I was a kid, my room was painted up in that color. And I was like, I want to do this so bad. And then by the time I was ready to put a wrap on the car, the red had unfortunately grown on me quite a bit. So I was like, I just yeah. the red. So mm -hmm. that's where I just ended up. I was like, all right, well, I just did half the wrap and then figured it needed something else. So I put the blue on it and it's it's yeah. probably gonna stay those colors forever now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah that's pretty, I mean, listen, that's that's like probably the last thing on your list, you know, have, right now. No, anyway, it's, so. it's actually surprisingly high on the list. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's always because I keep well, looking at it, and it's like it's kind. Some of it's kind of old now, where it's like starting to show a little bit of fade on it. And I'm like, oh man, yeah, I, just, yeah. I don't want to show up with that, but I, I don't want to pay the money for it yet. So I'm like, oh, I'll just have to do it for a couple of years. Yeah, hey, I mean, it would be awesome to see a golf themed livery on a on a Subaru. Like, I don't yes. know if you watch uh, the 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 Top Gear or not, you know uh, oh, the, the Grand Tour. They had the Martini. Oh, yeah, most recent one. Yeah, uh, Hammond had a Martini livery, you know, GD STI, which like <laughs> looked weird, but 
surprisingly cool at the same time. It was just, it was just different. You probably would, you know you would never think to see that on yeah, that just, type of car. A couple of those liveries just look good on everything. I mean, yeah, I don't think there's ever been a car that a Gulf Oil liveries looked bad on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. But I don't know. Maybe maybe you might have to do a throwback five five five, you know, livery now. <laughs> yeah, something. I feel it's although the Subaru stuff's like it's pretty well played out with the you know the colors. So you know, I think the yeah. bright red is not what people typically think of on Subaru. So I'm trying to get yeah. that represented a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do like the the pre World Rally Blue, like old school early '90s, like legacy, like mm -hmm. W when they had the legacy WRC oh, yeah. cars early 90s that those were kind of cool it was like a lighter white silver i think i can't remember with some like cherry blossom red mm -hmm. some cherry blossom red. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. yeah but hey thanks so much for coming on yeah. um we're going to be watching closely and uh i uh, hope you uh continue to do well rally crossing and, and make that make that jump to stage rally yeah yeah if there's yeah, anything you know need from us anything we can help you out with feel free to let us know you know we're uh you know, here to support, here to contribute. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. See ya. Take care. Bye. See ya.